guys, my name is Lindy. If you're new to my channel, I am an American that's been moving in France for the past five years. And before COVID hit, I went on a little trip to a new part of the world for me, Bulgaria. There were several unique and cool things about this beautiful country. I've only visited the city of Sofia, its capital. So today I'm just sharing just a few of those cool things that I discovered in Bulgaria. So my first stop was actually in Bucharest in Romania, but I think that's for another video. To travel into Bulgaria, we felt like we were in Harry Potter, headed off to Hogwarts. If you're wanting to travel to get there quickly, I would not recommend this train. This brisk 10 hour ride <laughs> is more for like this old school Harry Potter vibe rather than its speed. But it's only 30 euros and there are definitely no frills. So there's like no food or bar on the train. So we made sure to pack a lunch, some snacks, some things to do. And it doesn't hurt to have a great company as well. Overall, it was a super cool experience and a fun way to start our Bulgaria tour. One of the best ways to learn about a place is through its food. We took a free food tour by Balkan Bites and I could not recommend this one enough. Our guide was so kind and very knowledgeable and really eager to answer questions. She was also passionate to show local food and Bulgarian specialties such as Bulgarian yogurt. Wine. Banista, which is a cheese pastry, among some other goodies. It was really cool too, because she was a younger tour guide who had been living in other European countries, but decided to come back to Bulgaria a few years ago. She like always wanted to leave the country, but it was when she came back to visit that she noticed how much change was happening and good change. She told us how more young people are expressing themselves. There's this art scene and great food. You could tell that she was really proud to be Bulgarian and truly enjoys the evolving city of Sofia. She also took us to this really cool spot. I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's Hajidraganov, but <laughs> could be wrong. But it has traditional Bulgarian cuisine. Though this restaurant shows traditional village house style decor, it does represent different regions of Bulgaria. So it's quite eclectic and not representative of just one specific area. It's definitely worth the stop though if you're in Sofia. They even have like folklore shows in the evenings and we actually went back later for dinner. Click shops. So another thing I thought was so unique are these shops. They look like five and dime corner stores, but they're actually built underground and only have this like window to shop from the sidewalk. You pick out what you want and you tell the vendor from the window. So it's basically like a sidewalk drive through. <laughs> the history behind it is after the fall of communism, it was more expensive to rent a storefront than a basement. So Bulgarians made it work economically. And klek in Bulgarian actually means squat. So that kind of explains having to squat down and order anything that you need. In another great way to see any place, especially in a limited time frame, is to try a free walking tour. I try to start off a trip taking a walking tour by a local gives you a chance to kind of get a feel, the vibe of the city, see where things are, as well as learning about its history, all within just a few hours. Plus, you have this passionate local who can answer questions, give recommendations, and then afterwards you can always go back to certain favorite spots and explore more on your own time. These aren't free, however, they're kindly doing this to show you their city and how passionate they are about it. So tips are always welcomed and super well-deserved. One of the coolest things to see in Sofia is this square, the Square of Tolerance. There are four different religious spots next to each other. Our guide said this was to show no matter your religion, we can function and live life together. The four buildings are an Orthodox church, a mosque, a Catholic cathedral, 
and the synagogue. There's also the Sardika Station Roman Ruins. That's right, there's actually Roman ruins located in their subway or metro system. That is when they were like starting construction for the metro, they stumbled upon these ruins. So now it's kind of a mix of a metro stop and a museum all in one. What we need is anarchy. So there's no way of denying it, but Bulgaria was run by a communist party up until the early 1990s. So you can see like democracy is still really new for the country and it's pretty evident to see there are many watchtowers that still remain but aren't used kind of sprawled out within the city i asked a local about its use and they said it was to watch traffic and people plus gave someone a job during communist times and i'm obviously just touching on the subject it's a huge part of this country's history and there's no way I can really dive too deep in just this short video. Now, if you're more interested in kind of exploring some churches and cathedrals, Sophia definitely offers that as well. There's St. George Church, which is actually the oldest building in Sophia. There's Alexander Nevesky Cathedral, which is located in the city center. And it's really pretty with like the turquoise contrasted with the gold. Very beautiful. There's also the Ivan Vasov National Theater. And this Viennese style theater is a landmark to the city. Now, the last part I want to talk to you about is on the Bulgarian language. I always find if you know just like a key few words, expressions, greetings, it just shows locals that you appreciate their language and are just eager to learn about their culture. I have proof of this. When we arrived in Bulgaria via the train and they checked our passports, I said, Bulgudaria, which means thank you to the guard. And he went from this like stony hard statue facade to this smiling warm face. And it was all because I just learned a few words of his language. So here are just a few useful words to know. And don't worry though, a lot of people speak English if you're in need. Dobrten, which means hello. Bulgudoria, which means thank you. Dovizdenen, which means goodbye. And that's about as far as my Bulgarian goes. <laughs> I definitely need to travel more within this beautiful country and I had such a wonderful time. Please let me know below if you've ever visited Bulgaria. What are your essentials that you would add? Maybe something that I missed. Thanks so much for watching. Dovizdenen. A la prochaine, bisous